There it is. <laughs> Here we go. Now, how do I do the? Um... I got the captions are going already. Okay, great. Thank you. It takes a village. Okay, so the next item is approve the consent calendar. The calendar has um, one set of minutes and then an approval to allow the co-chairs to write a letter of support for a, um, a grant that would allow the city and LTD to do first mile, last mile um, research for their programs. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, if, if the we all know how the consent calendar works. If you have concerns about either of those, um, you can personally pull them from the agenda. We'll talk about them individually. Alternatively, someone could make a motion and second to approve the consent calendar. What's your wishes, folks? Brenda's thumb is up. I assume that means she moves to approve it. Okay. I'll second. I'll second and it. Shell seconds. Okay. All those in favor, um, use your reaction button to either green or red dot. <laughs> you go to the participants um, thing, it'll tell you the count. Okay. I think. Yes, it well, at least shows it to me. Five, five yeses. And we know that Dan is not here. I'm um, voting yes. Okay. Brand is a yes. And Beth is a yes? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you. Um, we'll get that letter out. It has to be out by July 10th. I did ask them the question of would this funding allow them to look at county streets, and I haven't got an answer back yet. So you can remove your green dots. Um, review last general meeting. Any thoughts about how that went? That was the non-Zoom session where we talked about the neighborhood plan. Susan. Hi, I'm um, sorry, I can't use my uh, video camera tonight, everybody. Um, I do have a comment. I think it was, um, I, I would prefer in the future, if we have a guest that is coming to speak at our event, they should be speaking first. I don't think it's appropriate to ask guests to sit through our training sessions, et cetera. We should be more respectful of their time. So in the future, I would request that we please have that um, when we are having any outdoor guests, outside guests for uh, meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And, and that was an intentional decision. It's our usual policy to have guests go first, but um, we had a heads up that someone who came, attended our meeting might be disruptive about that guest. And we wanted to let Brenda and her team building process go before that so um, we could set um, a mood that might reduce the potential for that person um, disrupting the meeting. And whether that worked or not, it didn't happen. But I agree with you. Normally, we would not have guests go last. Right. I think it's always um, an expectation that there are going to be disruptions whenever we have any, extern any external company uh, visitors come. I don't think that we should be making adjustments all the time. I think that we need to learn how to come up with policies on how we're going to deal with things and deal with them as such, but we should not be making um, calls on the fly based on rumors or, you know, perceived innuendos or thoughts about an individual or their perception. That's just my two cents. We don't need to discuss it any further, but I just want to lay my feedback out there. Well, thank you, Sue. Anyone else? Brenda, you're muted. We can't hear you. We can't hear. You. Does anybody know how to unmute a phone? Star nine. Star nine, Brenda. Is that not working? I guess not. 
John, can you unmute all of us? And then that would unmute her and then we can all individually mute ourselves again. Yeah, let me see if that's the way to do it. Um, uh, everybody is unmuted. Uh, no, they aren't. Well, I they are. She is, I believe Brenda is giving us a signal that we should move on. Is that correct, Brenda? Yes. Okay. Brenda's oh, mute is her mute. It's not done in the, the participants. Oh, we don't have control, huh? You just oh. done. That. Yes, you did. I just, I, I was trying to say, um, I do think that Harry's plan or the rumor of Harry's plan ended up taking a lot more energy than we needed to. And I agree with um, what Susan just said. Okay. I'm wondering if there's any feedback about the, um, uh, conversation exercise that we did um, in terms of the value for community building and using our agenda that way. I was really disappointed there weren't more people there. Maybe summer, that was part of the thing. Michelle? I, I, felt, I thought it was really valuable. I mean, I got some really good stuff out of it. Um, and, and I agree with Brenda that it would have been nice if there'd been more people there. I think that unless there's some um, attractive thing on the agenda, you're not gonna get a whole lot of folks that kind of like the sexy topics, <laughs> you know, for lack of a better term. Um, so, but I, I thought it was, it had provided a lot of value. I appreciated uh, having that opportunity. Hey, Claire. Um, when I was, if we're having in-person meetings, that means we're not recording them. And I was working on the newsletter and realizing we don't have a recorded link from the uh, uh, Navigation Center presentation or from, from that last week. And so that's one downside of not being online. <laughs> well, with that in mind, I hope we can get our meeting management team together soon and figure out how we can hybrid meet again using the OWL. So if you're on that committee, expect an email soon, see if we can't find a way to do it. Part of the challenge is getting a time at the annex where people aren't meeting so we can come in and practice. Brenda? Um, one of the things we might try doing is like we could have recorded that meeting um, and then had the link for Claire, we would have had the navigation presentation, which I want to say was inspiring and I found was really, really helpful. Um, I'm like, I might want to volunteer there. I was so inspired. Um, but it, at Riversong, we're now doing, jet, we're not trying to do hybrid meetings, but when we have a meeting that's in person, we're allowing people to watch it. So it would be a, it would be a compromise, but it, it also allows people to watch what's happening um that, that might be easier for us to navigate so the team could think about that good idea anything else okay let's move on to item number four nope excuse me um yeah the new number four which is uh talking about the help me again claire September 9th, River Celebration. There you go, you're on. Okay, uh, I have to open my document. Okay, so um, we are moving forward with this uh, event. It's called River Celebration with kind of a either a, a connected phrase um, uh, from the River Road Community Organization. So we, her name gets in there. And um, it, it will be on September 9th. And um, I just wanted to put out more of a little bit of an overview about what are the, we talked about, what are the goals for this event? And most of it is building community, building a sense of community, providing an opportunity for neighbors to get out and connect with each other, um, to actually celebrate the, the amazing resources we have in our neighbors, neighborhood and, and, and talents also. 
So, um, but there's another piece that has to do with outreach. And we've all talked about, you know, how do we reach out to different parts of the community? And if we're having an uh, all person, an all community event like this, then this is a great opportunity to go and, you know, invite particular uh, constituents to participate. Um, and I'm thinking primarily renters in apartment buildings. Um, we've talked a lot in the past about canvassing. Um, what I wanna propose is that uh, we have a little half page flyer that is basically giving the general idea of the event and asking people um, if they, if they wanna participate in any way with a table or games or something like that, that they should um, contact us. So if anybody wants to take those around your, your, your neighborhood, your, your immediate neighbors or to specific areas like I'm thinking the apartment complex that's over by the navigation center and the um, iris complex and um, the, the new uh, development areas over by the railroad tracks. Um, so, or, you know, if there's something, that's something that needs to be done and you can take the initiative to do that. So I just want to give you a rundown so far of our yeses for participants. Um, Art 404, Healthy Bees, uh, uh, Razor Park, uh, the Volunteer Library, the um, Emergency Prep, the CAC Neighborhood Plan stuff, um, Mims Garden, Ecstatic Dance, Yoga, Reality Kitchen, Greenway Guardians, Seed Library, uh, a garden share, produce sharing table, a pie baking contest. Uh, <laughs> I think that's all the yeses. Um, so you can see the kind of diversity of, of events that we might be showcasing. Apple so, Press. What? Oh, Apple Press, yes. <laughs> so um, we have some, we have a good team, but what we need is some people who will say, yes, I will do this. And, and not necessarily have to go to meetings, but so the yes, I will do this is taking flyers to particular parts of the neighborhood that you, you wanna connect with and helping to reach out to um, neighborhood organizations or nonprofits or informal type of groups and inviting them. Um, so, and then more towards September, we're gonna need some help with day of type of things like setup. We're going to be wanting to get some tarps or outside rugs and chairs and things like that. So, can I um, do a quick go around and, and say whether or not you want to do a small thing or a big thing? Or, oh, recycling. Very good, Susan. Of course. Of course. That's excellent. Thank you. And we are, um, we're just waiting to hear back from the park, but we're either going to have the event on, um, uh, October 20, um, September 24th, 4th, the 1st, or the 8th. We're just waiting back from the park. So it's great, great. timing. Thank you. Yeah. I, I guess we'll have an ARCO table too. If you don't want to do a whole table for a project, you, we could be put it on the ARCO table. That's great. I'll happily do the ARCO table and then I can just answer questions at the same time. You got it. Great. Okay. So um, Michelle, does any of this excite you? Uh, if you'd asked me five days ago, Yes, my mother-in-law passed away on Saturday night oh. and her service is the 9th. I'm so sorry, the 9th of September? September? Oh, yes. on the same day? At, at the annex. Oh my, <laughs> I'm so sorry. So, and I, I'll have to help them with, you know, set up and clean up and all that stuff, so. Well, if there's anything that's, you know, the build up to it before yeah. the day of, um, be in touch. I will, I will. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm sorry. Uh, Beth, what about you? Where you're at? Well, I'm going to have to look at my calendar. That's, uh, yeah, I'll get back to you, Claire. Okay, great. Uh, Missy came to a meeting and has wrestled up a, a Apple Press. Is there, <laughs> any, <laughs> is there anything else that you want to put on the table? Yeah, I would 
totally distribute flyers around where I live. Okay, great. And I'll reach out to um, Beyond Toxics and see if they want to have a table and okay. they usually have some kind of event or, or, you know. Right. Let me just say the parameters for who we are placing for tables is that they have to be in the neighborhood and they can't sell anything. Okay. Beyond Toxics is a, I mean, a very long. I know. But let's talk about it. Not on, not in line. Okay. Because they do great work. Uh, Daniel, I'm hoping that you'll, oh, are you even listening? I'm hoping that Daniel will take the charge in, in businesses. Okay. Which reminds me, businesses is in our neighborhood plan to support and develop our economic community. And we, I want, I have talked to John about putting on the agenda for a future meeting, uh, more discussion about how we feel about working with businesses, because this planning for September 9th came, arose, surfaced some differences of opinion on the role of businesses in the community and what we can ask from them and blah, blah, blah. So that means that's a discussion we need to have, but Dan should be there for that. So we won't do it now. And I think the time's up. Great Claire, job, hi. Claire. What? I just wanted to say great job in getting folks involved. Yeah. The, and the response. and um, I have reached out to Dan and asked him to, because uh, I'm coordinating sort of the business stuff. So I'm working we, with him on oh, that, I but I haven't heard that. back from him. Okay. Well, he just peeked his face onto the screen. So I don't know. I just, I, I just uh, logged back in. It kicked me off and I went to end of my Wi-Fi. Sorry about that. Okay, Dan, we need to follow up with you about September 9th. That's the gist of the conversation. Okay. And John has also came to one of the meetings. Thank you, John, and said he would be sure we have ARCO tables. Well, not only that, cool. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we can get the, the navigation center there as a tabler, but also some of their clients, guests, whatever you want to call them, may be available to help for activities as well. Yeah, good idea. You know, some groups like Sarah's Treasures, um, you know, just uh, there, we have a lot of organizations that we don't really think of every day. So if you think of any, if you're brainstorming, just shoot me an email. Okay, thank you, everybody. Very good. Um, the next item is recommendation to River of Santa Clara Neighborhood Plan Community Advisory Committee. And Dan, you are in charge. Okay, so I am looking to get uh, switched over to my desktop. So I'm not working off of my phone. So forgive me for just a moment while I do that. Um, I'm also working on a, a pretty decent 911 at work and I'm trying to uh, get this wrapped up so I can run down and deal with that. So <laughs> give me, let me get this uh, joined in here. Let me. Patch out. I'll be right back. Any more conversation about September 9th? <laughs> okay. There he is. Okay. You're muted, Dan. There we go. Uh, John, do you want to start um, by talking uh, uh, with your kind of thoughts and presentation of this, and then I can kind of get and we can kind of go to an opposing view or other folks' view and take questions and answers? Is that kind of the format that we want to go tonight? Okay, let me see if I can set the stage. Um, when we originated the charter in 2017, I believe, we defined a process by which the final recommendations and decision process would work all the way through city council and county commission. And once the draft was finished, the next step was for the two neighborhood associations to review the document and make any recommendations they had to the CAC, of which three of us in this room are four of us with we are members of the CAC, but this is our opportunity as the neighborhood association to put concerns, thoughts, love notes, whatever to the CAC um, about the document as it currently resides. Then the CAC will 
take whatever information they want to talk about, make a recommendation, which will go to the two planning commissions, the city of Eugene and Lane County, and they will start their deliberations and basically put together the package that will go to the city council and the county commission. Both the two the two um, planning commissions and the two final bodies will have hearings as well before they make their decision. So that makes sense? Don't see any no's. Um, and Michelle was also on the CAC for a while too. I should point that out. So we're well represented. So our last meeting of the board, we agreed that we would consider input from people who had concerns as long as they had a potential solution to those concerns. So I took that opportunity to put together the document I sent you. Um, and with best suggestion, I tried to do a simple, not simple, but a shorter executive summary of each of the three issues that I think are concerns. Put that in a document and then supporting links and information that might help you understand why I'm coming from where I'm coming from. So what we might do, Dan, is see if there are any other concerns that people have and throw those into the mix, but take them one at a time, discuss them, see if people have thoughts and we can vote them up or down as whether there's something we want to send to the CAC. That's one way to do it, but you're in charge. Yeah, I think mean, that's a that's a fine approach. I, I mean, I, one thing I did want to say is it, it's a little bit of a weird dynamic for me because um, when I'm on the planning commission, right, and, and a board member, so I have to be very careful about the melding of both worlds here. So I'm trying to referee this as as best I can. So, um, you know, I, I I'm open to to that the process that John um, has outlined. Um, you you kind of outlined your your thoughts, Jack. Do we have anybody else from the CIZ who is going to give the kind of not really opposing um, uh, view, but the, the feeling that we should continue to just go as as is and 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 uh, uh, pass it as as is. I just have to say, John, that I really appreciated the executive summary that you put together. I think it's much easier to understand than trying to go through all the documents for a neophyte. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm texting Charles too. Susan has her hand up. I think Susan just talked though. So, um, Lucia? No. Oh, Susan, I'm sorry. I thought that was you, Susan. My apologies. That was not me. Thank you. That was Beth Drow for the record, um, in case anybody questions. Um, this is Susan. Um, I appreciate the document that you prepared. I do not, however, agree with the recommendations. Um, I know how you feel, John, about um, a variety of these. However, when I review them, I don't believe that these are um, things that we should be trying to change at the very end. I know you have been trying to change them all along, and I do respect and appreciate the fact that you have been um, very committed and very consistent. However, I don't believe that it is appropriate for us to ask the city council to go try to solve the entire parking challenges of the county. Um, I, I feel that that's um, just um, not a valid request at this point. And I recognize that parking is an issue, but I do not wanna see the entire neighborhood plan held up over it. I agree on the potential sure. loss of commercial prop. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not muted. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'm happy to stop there and we can go point by point, but um, just basically the point I'll make is as a whole, I have read through, I've been through all the different documents. I've read all the feedback. I understand what you are saying on all of your feedback, John. However, I believe that this um, uh, initiative has been in play for six years. I believe that there has been a lot of effort um, put uh, to try to come to closure. I don't believe that we are going to get any farther on the three points that you are continuing to push um, than we have already gotten. And I think if we continue to try to push um, farther on those three points, we will derail the program and not get the neighborhood plan. 
um, or not get any neighborhood plan. And I'd rather start with something um, that gives us a basis to move forward than keep pushing back and not um, be willing to accept what is on the table. So that's my perspective as a board member and a CAC member. Thank you. Okay, Lucia. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, I appreciated your point about kind of inherent challenges and walking fine lines with two different hats on. Um, and I also appreciate John's effort to align um, for, for this body, the, the kind of ongoing concerns uh, about, about the plan. But um, Susan, you're absolutely right. This, this project has been in play for six years and um, we have through diligence and, and coming back thousands of times with the city um, made as much progress, I think, as we, as we can. Um, and I really wanted to give folks on this body the opportunity to read the plan and the feedback and the public comment on your own and come to your own conclusions about what what the plan does and what it doesn't do and if those things are um, uh, red flags or or you know hard lines then you, you need to address that but um, the CAC is well aware of, of these concerns um, and they have been discussed at length in that body already so thanks now John do you want to hear from other folks before you re respond or do you okay let's sure, do. that's fine thanks Dan. uh claire you're next um one question i have is what is the vehicle uh for continuing to after this the plan is accepted by the city council presumably and and then we discover oh no we have a big problem with parking oh dear blah 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 then what is the vehicle for addressing those kinds of things after the fact? Is there anything at all? Because I, I kind of agree with what's been said about the parking as being, it's not just a neighborhood issue, except for the fact that we're part city, part county, um, and that it's part of a, a larger plan by the state, from the state. So I don't know, I think it's partially out of the scope of what we're doing to take it on. but. I want, to, I want to know what is the vehicle for future dis conflict resolution, discussion, add-ons, et cetera, et cetera. I'm done, check. Okay. Uh, John, I think that'll be you now. Okay, thanks everybody for your thoughts. Um, what I didn't say in this is I would hope that we would agree to recommend that we the CAC forward the plan, but with these three additional concerns. I don't think any of them will stop the plan other than the concern about the fact that the neighborhood plan doesn't need Envision Eugene at all, but that's that's the city council's concern, not ours. Our, it really isn't specific to the plan other than the fact that they're proposing a totally different process to densify along River Road that um, it's going to be a one size fit all document that I don't think will meet the unique conditions of any of those corridors. But um, the ask for a group to look at how we're going to handle parking in River Road and throughout the city, that's not a deal breaker for the neighborhood plan. Um, the concern about the the fact that we're likely to lose commercial buildings through the processes that will go forward after this and there's no protection. Um, the only way that's gonna happen is if the city council decides to do some sort of mupti like program, that's not gonna kill the neighborhood plan. So I don't think what I'm proposing is that we say don't pass the plan. It's what needs to be added for it to work for us. So I appreciate your concerns, but I don't think that's yeah, I'm, I'm proposing we say no. I'm saying we want to carry those concerns forward along with our recommendation of approving the plan. Brenda has her hand up, Dan. There you go, sorry. Yeah, Brenda. Um, I, I appreciate Susan's perspective because she also has been on there. And um, Jen, I know this is your passion. Um, I send a alternative, the third proposal, I think, 
in an email um, just because I, I felt sort of like your third proposal was, was really, it seemed like you were sort of yelling or arguing at the, at the process versus making a proposal. But um, given what Susan said, my question, and I guess that might be to the person who's behind me, who I've never met before that was here tonight, Lu Louisa, she might be able to answer it and keep Dan off the hot spot. Um, it seems like the things you're asking for are things that we as a River Road community organization might decide are things we'd like the city to address going forward. And they don't need to happen at the same time we're making recommendations to move forward with the community plan. Um, and linking them together just complicates it for everybody, including me, who's trying to understand what's the community plan versus what are the problems I see in the neighborhood that I'd like to figure out ways of addressing. And they, they're, I mean, I know they've been linked in the past, but maybe the way forward is to unlink them. That's my question. And I wonder if like Louisa or Beth or Susan, people that have been on this for a while, does that make, is that what you're saying? Louisa? Sure, yeah, I, I, I think it is. But uh, um, that's a, a good point and, and thoughtful. It is really important as the representatives of the community that we feel that this is a starting point and not an ending point for participation and engagement um, around the doing of all the things that we say that we're going to do. And the plan also requires an annual check-in with staff. I think that's actually the role of this body. Is that true, John, from your memory? Is that who the coordinating body for the annual check-in with the city is? I don't think it was determined. So there is in the plan a statement sort of mandating an annual reporting out of progress, challenges, opportunities with in coordination with city staff. Um, and so especially with parking and the role of the county and then the big hairy capital A annexation question, it is, I think, good to decouple some of those things in order to help people understand what the plan is really focused on. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm happy to uh, let other folks share their thoughts too. Throw myself in the queue real quick. You know, one thought I had, and I don't know what the, the group's thought is, is that it's kind of a binary choice. We either have to accept this or we don't. Um, and it carries with a, a, a kind of a doomsday scenario. It's like the death ceiling. Like what happens if we don't? Like there's no time to do anything with it. There's no money to, to get a lot of the, the next steps involved. What do you think, John, about having a letter that accompanies our recommendation that says we're we're going along with this because it really isn't another option for us to 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 go with? But it isn't that we don't want to support this, but there we we would hope that there were more things in it, and these are the things we were really hoping for. And we get that COVID has caused you know basically all the wind to go out of our sails in in organization and this five year long process. But as you look to other communities to take up this mantle and do the same thing, here's the lessons that we would hope. That, that come from this that you don't uh, repeat or that you get involved in other things or at least you circle back. So the council has it on record that this is what our feelings are rather than it's just a binary up, down, yes, no vote. That's just my, that's one idea. Put it on there. I like that idea because a lot of our concern has to do with the process and uh, undermining trust in the accountability of implementation of the plan. Uh, Michelle, I think that's a fabulous idea, Mike. You know, it's kind of it feels like a catch twenty two because, you know, this body, this River Road Community Organization, I know has heard from people who are just really stressed out and having a difficult time with parking. It's a and it's a, it's something where in the transportation world. There, you know, there's the planners are trying to get people out of their cars and into mass transit and walking and biking and active transportation. And, and honestly, in my opinion, they're not doing a super good job of educating the public about it. But that's a, a side note. And I think we'd be remiss to not to drop the ball on that or to not mention it. And I think your idea, Dan, is fabulous. And John, isn't that essentially what you were talking about doing anyway? I mean, this isn't a document that is meant to say no to the entire plan. 
but rather to point out the concerns that remain for those of us in the River Road community around what what is missing from the plan. Well, yeah, um, I think in order to get any success with the city council, you have to get their attention. And I think the neighborhood plan feedback would be a the primary way to get their attention. We can instead as a board propose that we send a separate letter, not to the CAC, but to the council about these concerns. If that's what you guys wanna do, I just don't want them to die because to me, they are significant issues that will make our neighborhood worse rather than better. And that's the thing that bothers me about the neighborhood plan is we haven't addressed the major concerns that we have. Um, whatever it takes to get it before the council, um, I'm more than willing to go along with. But I think it would carry more weight if we tried to get the CAC to say the same thing. You know, uh, whatever. Yeah. Susan. Um, I would just say I'd, I would be open to having a letter that would accompany. I am not open to the document as it is written at this point. Um, I think a very short document stating here are the things that we have continued concerns on. I don't think we need to do a multi-page document that goes into a lot of detail. That detail has already been covered in, in many, many, many documents um, and is frankly addressed in all of the feedback that we've seen or in some of the feedback we've seen. Um, but I also don't want it to diminish any of the other feedback that's in the document that is positive. And I, I, I recognize that parking is a key issue, um, but that does not nullify the goodness that is coming with this document. And I would like to see us um, vote in favor of proceeding with the plan as is, and we can agree as an organization of um, River Road Community Organization um, to do a, a letter as a separate document. But I would like to see us uh, approve it as is um, and move forward. That kind of sounds like a motion, Dan. Uh, I'll, I'll, if Susan would like to make it as such. Make a motion that we accept the CAC, I mean, excuse me, accept the neighborhood plan recommendation that has come from the city. I'm trying to think this very carefully, so hold, please, bear with me. I want to accept, I'm, I'm moving that we accept the recommendation from the city with the feedback as in, uh, as it is today, and that we work collaboratively on a document that is a short letter that we could attach with it, explaining the concerns we still have that are not in the document, but we do not wish to hold the current plan and its current state for, uh, back. Sorry, I'm rambling, but I wasn't prepared for the motion. Susan, would you accept make this suggestion? that we not accept but recommend that the CAC recommend acceptance because that's the role. Then that is accepted, yes. Uh, so we accept another friendly amendment. Why don't, why don't we just draft this together? Sure, amend uh, it. Yeah, what I was, I was gonna ask was, uh, uh, rather than saying we, which is kind of ambiguous because that we should assign people to write it. So I would assume John um, yeah, would be on it, but I, John should have a partner. So who would like to um, assist John in drafting the letter uh, to accompany this? I would recommend that all of us that are members of the CAC uh, be part of that and not one other individual. It should be all of sure. the CAC members. Sure. That could, uh, that having specifics in the motion would be helpful for us because then it's you know ambiguous. So um, I think that we've got the gist of the motion. Um, Claire, did you want to speak to the motion or do you have something uh, different before we go to uh, a second potential? I want to. I want to talk after it's seconded. Okay. Um, do I have a second on the motion? Uh, looks like Brenda is, is seconding the motion. Um, uh, let's open up for discussion. Claire. Um, I think the main thing that concerns me is the fact that it's not um, following through with Envision Eugene, and that I think that part of what we should say is that. We hope we want to see how the council 
um, is reconciling these neighborhood plans with the envisioned Eugene plan. Noted. Um, but was that noted by, I'm assuming that was noted by uh, you, John, so that you have that in the notes. Good. Yes. Okay. So we have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Uh, is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing no uh, discussion, let's- Brenda put her hand up. Yeah. All those in favor? Oh, sorry, Brenda. Okay. Brenda. I, just, just a clarification. Is the letter we're creating then from the board? It, I assume it would come from the board and that the yeah. CAC members for River Road would work together collaboratively oh, just, to just produce the letter to take to the board. So the, and the motion is really that the board is recommending that. And then we're asking the whole community at the meeting to confirm that recommendation in some small part of the meeting, right? So the next step for ARCO would be to take our deliberations today and present them to the membership for them to decide whether or not they support our position because they have the right to overturn, modify, whatever. Well, my concern is that we don't lay it out quite like uh, that, that we make it a pretty strong recommendation and move on to something else and not plan to have a meeting that opens it up for discussion because I think this motion is a really important motion and for all the reasons you've said, and most of the people showing up at a meeting, I think they told us last time, just tell me what to say. I don't know the weeds. I don't understand the weeds and I don't wanna throw weeds at them. So I think I'm ready to vote and then we'll talk about what to do at the meeting. Sorry. Okay, uh, all those in favor of the motion as uh, described, I can, I can Detail it back out, but if not, I think we're we're going to vote. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Um, Louisa, are you okay. all those in not in favor? Um, uh, signify by raising your hand. All in all, knows and abstaining. So it's uh, looks like we have it was uh, seven to uh, seven to zero. Uh, there's no there was no vote. Um, okay, so pass it. So then we can go on to, um, do you want me to hand this back to you, John? Um, I suppose, but we do need to talk about Brenda's concern about what we do with the next general meeting. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, the direction would be that you, that the, the CSC members and you, John, have until the next um, uh, board or, or you know, uh, general meeting, rather, to, to draft this letter. Um, we're interesting that you're taking, you've taken the direction of what the board is asking for, because it's kind of a one shot or deal, right? Um, you'll present it to the, the full body for a vote. Um, and either they affirm us our decision, which I would imagine that they probably would, given they kind of deferred to us already. Um, and it goes forward or not. Um, well, they can also modify it, but that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> would we not want to have a board vote on the letter before we go to the general meeting? I mean, my my own personal. I don't, I don't want to, you know, hijack this for uh, for my own personal self. But uh, I I trust everyone on this board. That's why I serve with them. So I think that they know the concerns and the and the issues. And I would hope if there's anything substantive that they're going to deviate from, they you know would reach out to us. But I have faith in you. That's me. But if it's a board decision, the board has to vote, and we've just empowered the CAC members to create a letter, not. And you're you going to accept whatever that letter is. Is that part of the motion? Yeah, because it's, I mean, it, it's the board in consultation with CAC members to, to draft this. Um, the, the alternative is to have another separate special meeting or to do this as kind of a committee, which I think is going to, I would argue, is going to be slower um, and not produce the same results. I think that, um, I guess we can come back for another vote and present it, or we can do maybe, I don't know what the procedure is, uh, John, is there a way to circulate it via email and get a um, approval that way? We have a policy for e-voting that matches state requirements, which says that you have to make a motion and present it to the board with a time certain, and it has to be approved by every board member in order to be approved, state law. Okay. But we've done it before many times. Well, I guess what I would we've argue. Also, we've also had a um, very petty 
the um, votes not get voted on because of that unanimous rule. So I, I would prefer if we're gonna have to vote, I would prefer we call a special meeting of some sort and, and do a vote uh, if necessary versus trying to um, uh, do it on email and have it be unanimous because I don't believe we would get a quorum. Right, Brenda. Um, it, 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 I, um, I think John would be more comfortable if we had a, some kind of a vote and, and confirmed it. Um, I, I heard clearly from Susan and, and you know I would say, I would think the presentation needs to be like a half a page. I mean, I know John has 10 pages or eight pages that he sent us, but I, I do thinking, think it needs to be clean and clear. And you know, we affirm this, it's a long process and there's five people that have been doing it. And if those folks could come to the board, to the full meeting, just so the full meeting could say, thank you for all your service, that would be a real way of, you know, endorsing how important that is. And then we, we need to plan something else for the meeting that's exciting so that this is not um, all that there is in the meeting. And, and I know it, I think that's all there is on your agenda. And that worries me a lot because I think we have, it doesn't, it doesn't deserve that sort of meeting chewing. We, we do that chewing for the community and that's, there was, that's our responsibility to feed that back to them. Beth. I think the executive summary that John's created, we could do some editing on it. Uh, it's two page, not quite two pages. And that could probably become our accompanying letter uh, with a little bit of editing in my mind. Well, let me just ask this, is everyone who's on this call now willing to, step to, to do a quick pop up meeting at some time in the next, you know, week uh, to if, if John and the CSE are able to get a draft letter out in the next, we'll call it five days, um, get it out for us to review, meet up next, next week at some point or the beginning of the week of the following to just hop on and, and, and approve it or not, um, we can be giving it uh, critiques along the way so that we're not spending the, the time on the call to debate it um, as opposed to, you know, here's my, here's my critiques. Um, is everyone here able uh, to, to be able to do that? At least for a quorum. What is a quorum? It would be a, a six, right? I think we're five. Uh, five. Okay. So there's nine people here. Are five of us able to do it? I am. That's the I would not be able to Three, in the four. next few weeks. Out of town after Wednesday next week. John, are you able to? Yeah, sure. Okay. So there's, there's um, <laughs> the uh, the process of holding an emergency meeting is we have to provide notice in some way to our membership. We could put it on the web page, which really is no notice at all, but it meets the requirement, um, and maybe an announcement on um, social media. But we do have to. If we have a special meeting, we have to notice people. Noted. That's 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 good. Thank you, Susan. Susan, um, may I make a proposal that I take a stab at making a more neutral version, uh, a much abbreviated neutral version of the document? I'll take a stab. I'll send it to you, John. I think if you and I can get clarity and get alignment, um, then we can share it to the rest of the board and get everyone's kind of general opinion. If we need to do a vote at that point, we would have had some feedback and we could do an online vote. Um, and if it's unanimous, great. If it's not, then we would not send a letter associate in a, in a long, along with the a recommendation. Does that make sense? Um, I'm fine with that other than it has to be unanimous. That's only an e-voting. Well, that's what I'm saying. If, since we can't get everyone together, what I'm saying is I believe that if you and I can get some alignment on a short document and we send that document out to the board to discuss online, we might be able to get enough agreement that we could do an online vote. And if it is unanimous, we go forward. If it is not unanimous, we don't include a letter with the recommendation. I'm not willing to accept that everybody has to agree. I think a majority is fine. Okay. 
Uh, Brenda. Uh, I like Susan's proposal uh, and would remind us that if we didn't, if, if that proposal went along and we all did not unanimously agree with it, we have another board meeting next month and the city council isn't going to go away. It just means a letter doesn't accompany the approval of the plan. It doesn't mean we stop talking to the city council. Not seeing any other hands, I'm just gonna throw myself in the queue. I, I'm, I, I don't know that we, it, 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 to John's point, this this has impact because it would be accompanied, accompanying the, um, the approval. Um, if we if we wait, it it loses its punch, which it, there's there's not a whole lot of punch here, but it's something. And and if it's the only shot in the barrel, you know, it's the Hamilton line. Take your shot, right? Um, I I I think that we have enough people who are willing to, to to show up and do it. I don't know that we necessarily need a unanimous vote. As contentious contentious as this issue is, I'm not sure that we would get there, um, or at least it'd be hard to do. I mean, it's that's going to be hard. To, to, to get there. And at this point, we're on the 99 yard line and trying to find some pathway to build that extra um, uh, yard with bailing wire and twine. So um, I would, I would say, let's, let's just get on a, on a call, get, get the, the letter together. And if maybe we want to have two versions, if Brennan, uh, Susan, if you want to uh, draft a more neutral one um, and John drafts uh, the one that, that meets his purview and then let's the body decide which one they want to send on. I that's, just that's a different say, proposal. Yeah, I I agree with Dan. I think it needs to go with our recommendation on the entire plan, and I think you can take John's executive summary and make it not as um, negative, perhaps as it may sound to some people, but still get our point across. And so I think it's just a matter of tightening up the language, maybe changing a few words in the executive summary that we have. And for the record, I I've seen, I I feel like I feel empowered to say it. I, I've seen what John you've written. I, I don't I don't see it as I don't know what the opposite of of uh, um kind of the word we used. Uh, Susan, what you use? Uh, you know, I I didn't see it was that pointed. I I, I felt that it was a, an accurate representation of what five years of everyone's life has been like. You know, and. Uh, there's some fault of the city. There's fault of COVID. There's lots of COVID fault to go around. But I don't think there's anything that I've heard you say that I wouldn't want the city council to know about and, and, and hear that experience. Because again, to me, the most important thing actually isn't the neighborhood plan. The, the most important thing for me is what are you telling the next neighborhood whether they should devote five years of their life to this? And if all we do is just say, yeah, it was a great experience. Everything went well. Um, you know, we didn't get what we wanted, but, you know, hopefully we'll get on the next time. I don't think that that's doing a service to them, but they, they should know what they're getting themselves into good and bad. Um, and the city should know that there are people who are disappointed with how, what we did not do. And hopefully, um, they, they learn from that, um, as best they can with the resources they have. And, you know, the, the next group knows to ask the questions to make sure that they get the resources they want. That's my piece. John. Okay, I, I move to amend because Robert's rules yeah. say we have to do it that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The motion to basically say, submit this two page document as our letter of concern, along with our approval of the plan and not have to go through another rewrite. Is there a second? I'll second that. Um, on an amendment, doesn't that require, it's already been, it's already been approved. So we would need to, mm -hmm. okay. it's not a friendly amendment. I, I don't need the approval of, of the original draftee. Okay. So we have a second. Do we have a uh, uh, debate? I would be curious to hear what people have concerns about in those two pages. Does anybody have any um, thoughts? Excuse on me, this is Susan. I was trying to yeah. get my in for me, my hand up. So just one okay. moment. I'm trying to get the documents up. I spent most of my time focusing on your input to the board, which was, in my opinion, an incredibly negative document. 
I would need to go back and reread the um, two page executive summary. I believe it is a separate because when I open up, it immediately goes to the three significant unresolved issues, which I believed was the document we were discussing. And if we've been discussing a different document than the 14 page document input to board, please let me know. Susan, we're talking about the first two pages of that 14 page document. The right. Which, summary. As as what I just read was the three the three bullet points. Essentially, yes. I am not comfortable with those three bullet points as they are written, and I would um, sorry, just not comfortable at this point with those. Could you the way be they're more written, specific as why? I am sorry. I am unfortunately I cannot because in this frenzy I just um, accidentally closed it, and now I need to go get it back up. Um, I would be again more than happy to rewrite it and write it in a way that I believe is more neutral. I think some of my bias might be that I'm hearing it in your tone, John, because I have heard you say these things in many, many occasions. And um, the reality is we have had a difference of opinion on this for quite some time. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at it and I am hearing it with your tone. So I will agree that I will go back and reread it and try to see if I can take my tone out, the tonality that I, I believe I am bringing into it. And I will admit to that. Um, but I do not believe the way it is written will feel neutral to the people that have been working on this for six years. I think that they too will hear it in the same tonality and might take it negatively, even if it is intended to be a neutral document. Okay, well, throwing myself back in the queue because I'm not seeing any other hands here. Um, I'll go back to my original thought, which was, oh, we lost another person. Uh, my screen flickered, sorry. Um, what would be the, I mean, it requ would require the vote back again, as opposed to just making something in the past now, but what would be the objection to having the two versions and letting the body make a decision? So if if people like three different bullet points written, or maybe they like one of Susan's and two of John's or vice versa, and they, they then this body has the option of seeing both versions before making that recommendation to the full body. So we're sort of talking about three different ways of doing this now, taking the one that I've written and accepting it as is, which some people have issues with, yeah. um, having Susan write an alternative or Susan and I try to craft one together. Um, of those three options, I've, if, if people want another shot at it, I, I would like Susan and I to try to see if we can't come to agreement. But, but I'm, that's just my thought. I like the idea that Susan put forward to see if Susan and John can work out a mutually uh, acceptable version. I think that that's a really good process. Just the one other point I want to make is I don't think the three points are the only things we want to say. I mean, I think that we have things to say about concerns for implementation in other neighborhoods um and we haven't really said these are the three concerns we have <laughs> or the two concerns or the one concern um but one of them will be and i don't know if it's in the, covered in the points john let me correct me if i'm wrong but um the the direction the city seems to be going about making one uh type of code uh, for the whole city rather than being context specific um and um Yeah, well, and either whatever else is about the process. I don't know if we want to get into process with this or not, but that, that's pretty much the third one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's my understanding is that that's the third point that you make, John, is um, that there it's a one size fits all as opposed yeah. to looking at the differences in the different neighborhoods. Okay. And it might be a little clearer than what it is. I don't. Um, I haven't tried to wordsmith it. Be right back in 30 seconds. So maybe we should vote on the um, the John and Susan draft. Why don't we do a little uh, a temperature check, which doesn't have to be a Robert's Rules of Order. I mean, like, I think that's a great idea. If you're if you're for it, put your hand up. And if you're you're halfway, put that. And if you're down, put your hand down. I think it seems like 
people are willing to, then you can have an actual vote and people will pass. So we, we may not have to talk about it forever for a lot more. Right. I thought offer, right. offer was very generous. Well, that's essentially the first one we passed. So, I yeah. mean, if we if right. we defeat this motion, um, and it well, looks like we will, then we go we revert back to the first one, and we've already agreed to that. Okay, good. Do we have a motion on the floor? I'm sorry, I didn't realize we did. Yeah, the motion was to replace that previous motion with a motion that would just submit the two pages that I wrote. And did it get? We yeah, haven't I voted. Did it it get did. I don't remember getting a second. Second did, John. Beth did. Oh, excuse me. Oh, my, okay. Then um, then, then we got called the question. Um, all those in favor of that motion, um, raise your hand. Could you say the motion again? We've gone through yeah. three different versions of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need it repeated then because I, I, don't, I don't have it written down. Uh, what I've got is John moved to amend the motion to submit the two page document. That's already presented before you. Right. The first two pages of the document. As written. As written. Right. So all those in favor are signified by raising their hands. Opposed? Susan, three, four, okay. So motion motion fails. Uh, I believe it's seven to one. So um, uh, seven to uh, seven to two because Missy just typed in uh, yes. So seven to two. So my question now is uh, you know, now we're down to six. Excuse me. So it would be uh, four to two. Excuse me. Or six, six to six to two. Excuse me. My 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 screen is all over the place on on Zoom. Yeah, six to. Uh, anyway. Okay, so we're back to the original, which is uh, we have the, uh, the the first motion's already passed. If we want to amend that, um, or do we want to let it stand? I believe one of the other questions was, do we want to allow uh, or ask John and Susan to kind of have a meeting of the minds uh, to, to draft something in between? Is that kind of where we're circling right now? Yes. And, okay. And, yeah. and I was incorrect. We originally said the... Um, River Road members of the CAC would craft a letter. It would be an, an amendment to just have Susan and I do it, but that's a simple vote. And, Susan, Jeff, and while you were gone, we did a little temperature check and it seemed, at least by my observation, that people were willing, were excited about having Susan, Susan and John draft something. Well, my next question is, are Susan and John excited about drafting? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's a slightly <laughs> question, Susan. How are you? Uh, in this is yeah. I'm totally fine. It was um, my suggestion. I'm more than happy. My, what I would propose, I would do, is I would try to make a um, an a brave uh, an a, uh, an a an amended version of the document as it was presented, as well as including the uh, comment that you made, Claire. Um, as well as any other feedback that anyone has, if we want to get any other main major things in, but it did seem to me like the focus was those points, as well as to ensure that we speak to the um, need, you know, ensuring that other communities um, and, and the pro speaking to the process, sorry, am I correct? And that's what we were talking about that you wanted to add in was something to the process itself, Claire? Yes. Okay. I will take oh, a step and, at and that. And that's actually covered in the third point that John. Yeah, people said okay. that those points were covered in the third point. Yeah, so understand. Okay, thank good you. enough for me. So I will take a stab at getting you a draft of my um, my revision by this Friday evening, John, that you can review and we can go back and forth on, and then perhaps we can get to something that we can send out to the team by early next week. I'm cautiously optimistic. Thank you. I am as well. <laughs> so keeping that in mind when we say early I'm, I'm a big fan of, thank you both for doing that but i'm a big fan of having some definites here so we're talking about getting this in our into our hands tuesday does that sound which is the fourth of july and i don't know um, if you have weekend wednesday. plans be wednesday. aware not home <laughs> yeah well i just meant in our hands by wednesday i actually meeting on wednesday so in other words we're able to have a couple of days to digest it and, and work through it so that maybe our meeting can be on friday of next week 
Yeah, all I can commit to is I, I know I will get a draft to John on the by this Friday um, afternoon. I can't commit to how many times he and I will go back and forth and or the other members of the CAC uh, before we feel like we're ready to share it with the broader board. But um, I, I am, well, I am committed and I'm in town next week. So well, then let's just have a tentative thought of, of having our hands by Wednesday so that we can have a meeting by Friday. But in other words, we'll have a two day window that moves along. So whenever we get it, we're going to try to have the meeting or our meeting two days after that so that you can kind of plan our lives about if you when we when we announcement comes out you've got the document set your calendar two days uh, advanced um to to pop on and 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 vote on this thing uh, michelle yeah i had a question uh, uh, and i'm going to direct it kind of to the current cac members and it is kind of on the heels of what susan was talking about about adding some concerns about procedures and process and stuff for like other neighborhoods that are going to take this on. When I was involved in it early on, that was kind of a CAC wide thing that we discussed at that point in time of writing it in the final report to the city about those particular concerns. So would we be duplicating or has that been a current top of of discussion with the current CAC as you know is there any kind of discussion about what kind of recommendations that they're going to forward um, if I may um, my okay. recollection and I don't remember whether it was in the PMT meeting or the CAC meeting but a recommendation was made that we produce a lessons learned document mm -hmm. but I don't see any problem with that starting with our neighborhood to put some of those issues in front of the CAC when they craft that document. Sounds good. Okay, because I know there's a ton of things that of lessons learned that the CAC talked about. You know, when, when after we're done with this, we're gonna make this recommendation for this, 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 and this. And, you know, are we, I guess it just gives, strength to it but i just wanted to make sure that that's really being followed up on and see what kind of status it was but um so there is a process then to, to kind of address some of those procedural issues well it might be wise for us in our letter saying we're submitting these to you for a lessons learned to heighten our desire that that happens okay okay thank you um, you are you had your hand up for something else um no well um I'm 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 a little confused. Are Susan and I writing this letter, or are all the CAC members giving their feedback, or all five of us writing this letter? Hey, the fewer chefs in the kitchen, the better. But <laughs> that's my point. Yes. Um, I I would suggest as a process that Susan and I work on it and ask for feedback from the other CAC members, but the onus is on us. Yep. Does that work for you, Susan? I believe that's what I recommended, but if uh, if that was misunderstood, I apologize, but that is my intent. Okay, good. I thought it was a letter from our board. It so is. Now it's changed to be a letter from the CAC? No, no. it's still from our board. The CAC board. will do their own letter, but we are... But why does the CAC have to be part of the conversation at this stage? Because they're subject matter experts, I assume. It's just River Road's uh, CAC members and John. Um, oh, Right, writing the, the, the letter that we're going to recommend to the body that will then get sent on, presumably. Okay, that was not clear. Okay. Okay, um, I think we have a, a pathway forward. John, I think I'm ready to turn the meeting back to you. And I'm going to go put some fires out. <laughs> okay. Well, Brenda has presaged uh -huh. the next discussion, which is what do we do with our next general meeting? Um, I do. We do have a responsibility to put this in front of our neighbors, and it's a five-year process. I don't think we should ram it down their throats, that we give them an opportunity to give their feedback. But I don't think that takes the entire meeting. If we Did we do that last week, last month? We did not take a recommendation to our membership, no. Okay. But we got feedback from folks. Yes, we have gotten a lot of feedback, and there is pages and pages of it in all of our emails. All 39 people who responded to the request, yeah. So I'm wondering if there's any, can that be shared and summarize, summarize or something? I mean, it's, if we ask for people. 
all the feedback was shared, was it not? Um, the feedback document that has been produced, as far as I know, is only available to the CAC unless someone shared it out. I have not shared it, but I was not aware that I could not. No, I agree. But the point is that I don't think there's any place. There may be a place to go to. It, it's, I don't know. I, I think things are devolving as we come to the end. I mean, the fact that only 39 people bothered to participate in the engage Eugene process when we had hundreds of people at the beginning is telling. Um, but I don't know what the mechanism the city has used to try to tell the neighborhoods what has come out of the feedback. So, so I'm talking about the feed, people came to our meeting and discussed and put in feedback. I think it would be good to continue the line of thought and let people know what we heard from the last meeting. And based on that, we were writing this letter or based on our own experience of writing this letter. I just feel like it's not good to invite people's feedback and then ignore that it happened. So I'm, I'm not sure what you're suggesting, Claire. There is a feedback document. Again, I don't know how and well it's been disseminated. It's not. Nobody it's, knows it's, about it but you. So can I just chime in? It, I, I think the problem here is that John, neither John nor I were under are under the impression that it was our responsibility to share it with the broader board. I think what we should do is step back. John, we can ask Terry if there's any reason that we could not share that document, the feedback with the rest of the board. I read through it and I don't see, I didn't see anything that we had not heard at all of the other various meetings, but I have got no qualms sharing it with anybody on this board unless there is a- But I've already done case. that with links. Okay, so then what's this dialogue? I'm sorry. So uh, I was, this is regarding the next meeting. I was thinking it would be verbally good to say, we talked about this last month. Here's the, here's the gist of the feedback that we've gotten and now we're going to move to up uh, to um, approve this letter or whatever it is we're going to do. Um, perhaps we can put a link in the next newsletter to the comments and we can refer people to the newsletter so they could just click on it if they're interested in reading what others people shared. Yeah, that makes sense. I think to me anyway. Um, I think the two things we can do is put those links into our next e-news and also post them on our website in an area of neighborhood plan. Now, I don't think it's a, an ideal way to get to spread the word, but it's more spreading than I think the city's doing. But I may not be aware of what they're doing. Whatever the city does, I don't care. I feels like we have a responsibility in the neighborhood and its neighborhood leadership. But if you're recommending that we write a summary of their summary, I don't think we should do that. Brenda? Um, I'm just trying to get a little clarity. The last month, if you go to the next meeting and you say last month is when I led a meeting and we heard about the navigation center. Um, it might have been the month before that. I think you're right. Yeah. When Claire's talking. And um, if we got feedback from our people, I think this is a, just a follow up. We appreciate, we, here's the themes we heard. And um, we talked about a bit about the, the, the plan at that point. I mean, you introduced it and explained it and, ta and talked about the history at that point, didn't you? Yes. So, so I, I think that's my point is I don't want us to repeat that history and repeat that information. Um, and I think what Claire is saying is let's go back and look at that meeting and bring a few of those things forward to say, we really appreciate you talking about this. The board has, has drafted this present, this letter that we'd like to send forward. And um, we aren't gonna forget these concerns uh, so we're going to send a letter along with our endorsement of this plan because it's moving forward. I mean, so that you don't, like Keller said, you don't want to invite people to something and then ignore them, but you also don't want to do the same thing twice, even though you may have a whole different audience both times. Yeah. Well, again, trying to understand 
if let me see if I hear what you're suggesting that when we present the information in our letter to the membership, we also include that this is based upon the feedback we heard from you at our meeting, the people who came to the meeting at North Eugene High School, the 49 people that, about 39 people that provided input through um, Engage Eugene and having heard all that, this is our letter. I don't, I don't think that's where the letter came from. I think the letter came from you and Susan. And I, I don't know that, that the letter addresses all of that feedback. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you say that, but I'm suggesting you acknowledge that people gave feedback and here's what we heard from you. Well, I don't know what you mean by here's what we heard from you. I wasn't at the meeting. There is a document the city has put together that summarizes what was said at our meeting was said at Santa Clara's meeting was said at North Eugene High School meeting was okay. submitted by the 39 people who filled out the envision engage in gene form um, and the two group two sessions with five people that they had online. So I didn't realize that it's not been highlighted anywhere and we can highlight it in the newsletter and that's good enough for me. Well, we can certainly have a link to that feedback document. Yes. Susan, Does that work again, for you, Brenda? Once, once again, can I just please ask that we please confirm with the C, with the city um, before we publish their document, the document that they have created with all the feedback, I think we should confirm with the city that they are at a point that they're comfortable with us doing that because they may have their own mechanism. I just don't want to Wait, do their job for them. Yeah, that's a good point. May I also just make one other comment? I want to be real clear. The letter that I believe we are in the are going to be drafting for next week is not a letter to our general our general residents. It is a letter to accompany our approval of the plan, neighborhood plan to the CAC. So I just want to be real clear, clear. We are not composing a letter that will be shared with our residents at this point. This is to go with the CAC recommendation. Actually, Susan, we are required to share that letter with our membership for them to have the opportunity to change it, accept it, or throw it out. So did they get to do that to the entire that, plan as well? So they get to do that to the entire plan? Or is it just any letter that we send to the CAC, they get to amend? Any decision made by our board has to be put in front of our membership for them to review. That's in I our I don't have a problem with that. I'm, I'm, I'm just making a statement. The letter is going to be addressed to the CAC. The public can read it, but it is not a letter to the public saying, here's what we're going to go recommend to the CAC. Right. It's a letter to the CAC. And there are different ways that you would compose those documents, which is why I'm being very clear on that. Well, and I'm trying to be clear too. If we're sending that letter to the CAC, we have to put it in front of our membership for there to amend it, reject it, or accept it. Actually, they don't have to accept it. So but we're going to have, have a vote. So you're saying at the next general meeting, we're going to have a vote? Not to necessarily. The neighborhood plan? No. Then I don't understand what you're requesting then. I apologize. The letter that naive. the board is approving is a decision by the board. All decisions by the board have to be presented at the next general meeting for the membership if they choose to modify or reject, Great. that's in our chart. Okay, I'm not saying anything with that, but it is again, the way we are composing this document is it is being written to the members of the CAC, not to the general public. There Correct. is a difference in how I would initially compose the document, which is why I'm being clear here. I understand and I want no ambiguity either. Um, and I thought we were writing this letter to the council, not to the CAC. And I, I thought that too, it. yeah. So it's not to the CAC, Susan, it's to the council. Did we? Didn't but everybody's we just... putting their thumbs up. Okay, great. Then it's going to the council. Fine. I got the, I know who to address it to. <laughs> okay, we have another 
actually we have three minutes, but we don't have a program for next month other than to have the membership bless our letter. What else do we want to do? Claire? Um, we, and, and it's like, we have to, I need to know by, you know, Monday. <laughs> so that's yeah. the problem of having a, a, a board meeting late in the month, you know? I know. Um, so one suggestion is to have um, CETA come talk about tenants' rights, because I think that's up. The council is having hearings about tenants' rights, and we need to uh, uh, have things of interest to that portion of the community. Other suggestions? With Master that, Master go ahead. Commissioner, come in back, back. What? Master County Commissioners, uh, if they be, if you know, Ryan would be available to. Right. Right. Okay. I know I have some questions. <laughs> okay, so two suggestions, and and that might be enough to fill the time along with whatever discussion we have about the plan. There may be people who want to rail against the plan, not necessarily our letter. So we have to give them that time. So, well, do we? I mean, there have been plenty of opportunities to rail against the plan if they wanted to. This, this isn't that isn't what we're asking. I mean, I want Dan or somebody else to do the presentation if it's going to have any hint, John, that this is your opportunity to agree or throw it out or change it. That just sets it up for a railing against the plan, and that's not what we're trying to do. I'm we're not trying saying to... that, Brenda. What I'm saying is, if we're sending our decision, our recommendation to the CAC, there may be people in the community that want to speak out, and I don't think we should prevent them from doing so. And I don't know that they will. But after five years trying to avoid having people have a chance to say what they think is not appropriate in my mind. They may say, I think it's the most wonderful thing in the world and I'm so proud we did it. I don't know. They may what say did, nothing. What did they say last time you talked about it? Two months ago. That, I wasn't that was an op it wasn't a, do you like the plan or not? It's what questions do you have about the plan? Dan? I would just say in the arc of almost everything involving the um, public input, it's a it's a wash tub. You get this huge spike of, of people who have opinions at the beginning, it falls off to nothing while everyone does the work. And then when everyone comes back with the finals product, everyone has an opinion of what they should have done the entire time. So uh, it's a it's a total shot in the dark is, as to whether or not people show up and, and uh, give their two cents of what they would have done if they should have the past five years, but it is what it is. Um, okay. uh, I know how I'm voting. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's that mantra, there's only two times to give input to a public process, one when it's too early and the other one is too late. Well, to that end, uh, thank both of you, you and uh, actually everyone who's on the call too, uh, who's, who's made this their life for five years. Um, it's only been mine for a little over a year or so. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a thank you for all of us. Indeed. So it sounds like we have two potential items and they are potentials. Well, I'm sure we can get the folks from the Renters Association. I will contact Ryan tomorrow and see if he's available. He wasn't able to make the last meeting. So- You have contacts for the Renters Association? I do not. Springfield Eugene Tenants Association is- Okay, what got it. All right, I can give Tim a call, need be. Want me to do that? Yeah. Sure. And I'll check on Ryan. Okay. And, and once again, if we can't get them, we'll come back with another alternative as we did last month. But we need to get ahead of these things. What's your thinking cap on, Brenda? <laughs> okay. I think that's our agenda. Anything else for I the good of the order? Yeah, John, I, another really good program I think to have is the new uh, LTD guy, um, and get him on our agenda. He's very well spoken. Right. And that, been, that, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say there, just because there's been so much controversy about LTD out in this community, to give him the opportunity to talk about what his vision is and to 
respond to questions and concerns that people out here might have. Yeah, that is on future meeting list. Um, I don't think it's quite ready yet. Speaking of which, I should have mentioned this. LTD is looking for some 24 to 30 people, I can't remember how many, to serve as an advisory committee for their strategic planning. I'll send you guys the link to apply if you're interested. Is it paid? Um, actually, it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> John, that would what make me paid you speak of <laughs> that like a, a reason to have that program rather than something else we mentioned, because if they're looking for people now to have the guy from LTD come. Because it puts that out while they're looking for somebody being too late, as you were saying. Okay, um, that's a possibility, Susan. That's She's clapping. Pause. That's a clapping of Brenda's statement, not a hand up. Okay. I'm not sure that Jameson is ready yet, and um, but I'll see what I can do. He is an excellent speaker. Okay, let's go. Anything else? Okay, thank you, everybody. Good night. Meeting Good night. Folks. Nice work, guys. Good night. Take care. So anything I have to say? Well, she's gone. I'm here. I'm gone. I'm the only one left. Everybody left you, John. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm I'm wondering if there's anything I have to do in Zoom to finish things up other than copy the chat. Can you hear me? You'll have to copy the chat or else you won't be able to send it to Francis because I didn't send it. I didn't have the capacity to copy it tonight for her. Well, the last chat item is good night all. I've saved the chat and have a screenshot of participants. Good. So I think she has it. Thanks, Brenda.